Dana White needs a lot of credit on this. Look, Vince McMahon 101, give the audience what they want, but not what they're expecting. And I got to tell you, I think all eyes were on Conor versus Poirier. Massive fight. In fairness, it was also the only meaningful fight at 155 that was announced at the time we had this information. I think this is great. Look, what do Chandler and Oliver have against them? Well, they're just not household faces yet. Their names that are catching on, their resume is absolutely beautiful. But if the winner of that is to draw into Connor versus Poirier, which I believe we can at least say should be the number one contenders match. All of a sudden, you solve a lot of problems very quickly. Competitively, architecture, I love the fight. Yes is my answer to the question. Great fight to make for the Shroud. And the UFC right now, Chael, has an embarrassment of riches at 155. There could have been many different permutations that they went with here. I think the initial reaction from most of the MMA community was, wait a second, Dustin Poirier got screwed here. He should be the lightweight champion after his win over Conor McGregor. And so I think a lot of them were initially mad about that, but then they forgot, wait, Dustin's in talks to fight Conor McGregor later on this summer for the third time. Now, if that falls apart and the UFC and Conor move on from Dustin, now we're, we, you know, we can have another round about him you know, gambling on himself and, and, and ultimately losing out. But for now, let's say Dustin and Connor are matched up. By the way, that fight isn't official just yet, but let's say those two guys are paired up. Now you have a situation where you have Oliveira, who should definitely be in the main event fighting for a lightweight title, a vacant lightweight title. And then you have either Michael Chandler or Justin Gaethje, right? Those are the other two big names who are gunning for that other spot now that Dustin is already booked up. I think a lot of people would have thought Gaethje would get the nod because, hey, you know, he's coming off a loss to Khabib. But again, he's coming off a loss to Khabib. He got a chance to fight for the UFC title not that long ago. So ultimately, I don't hate this. I am happy that Oliveira got the shot because I was worried that they would give it to the two more popular guys, if you will, and not the guy who doesn't speak English, not the guy who doesn't have the biggest social media following, and not the guy who you know, merit-based wise, actually has the most impressive resume. After he beat Tony Ferguson the way in which he did in December, Charles Oliveira deserved to be fighting for a title next. He played, you know, a, a pretty tough hand there. You know, he was sticking to his guns. He didn't want to take a short nose fight against Michael Chandler. I was afraid that they were going to punish him, Chael. Ultimately, I am very happy that he's getting the shot, and I'm, I'm not too bothered about the fact that Chandler's getting it over Gaethje. And Aaron, you talk about an embarrassment of riches at 155 pounds. Look, I got to tell you, partner, you just shared something with me. You said that this fight between Conor and Poirier isn't done. Excuse me. I was told this fight was going to happen in May. Now, I, I will admit that the rumor mill and this, how, how quickly this has changed and how many times it's changed, but that's very frustrating for me as a fan. What are you talking about and who's not coming to the table here? How can we not get this fight done? And Aaron, assume this fight does get done. Assume where there's smoke, there's going to be fire. Because you also talked about, did Dustin Poirier get screwed? Of all of the scenarios, two of the leading scenarios for Dustin would be, Dustin, would you like to fight for the championship? It won't be against Connor. Or would you like to fight against Connor? It's not going to be for the championship. So when you get presented to it in that form by Dustin Poirier, I'm not sure he was glossed over. I'm not sure he was slighted. I think he made his play and his move. And I don't think it's incumbent upon us to decide if Dustin was screwed. If Dustin feels everything was above board and Ariel, he appears to. Yes, um, so he made that decision, and they are honoring that decision, and there's really no point to put a title fight in a Conor fight because Conor's bigger than any title. He's bigger box office. Beating him is more lucrative than becoming a champion in any division. So I think they think, all right, you know, you can't headline a show with Oliveira versus Chandler, right? But you can headline it with Oliveira versus Chandler for the vacant lightweight title. So why not split up the two and not put all your eggs in the Connor basket? And so as a result of that, Dustin's not fighting for the belt. But yes, to go back to your initial question, that fight is not a done deal. They tried to make that fight for May 15th. Non-title fight, trilogy fight. But as of right now, they're having a hard time finalizing the deal. And so that's why I say things are going to get really interesting in the next few weeks. Because at some point, look, Dustin's greatest ally right now is a man named Conor McGregor because Conor McGregor is telling the UFC, don't bring me any other fight, don't bring me any other opponent, I want the trilogy, I want to right this wrong, right? Okay, so they're, they're trying to make it happen, but at some point, Conor's gonna say, if they don't get the fight done, hey, I want to move on, I need to fight, I want to fight in July, I don't want the same thing to happen to me in 2020 to happen to me in 2021. And so then do you look at a Justin Gaethje or do you look at a Nathan Diaz? That's why the next few weeks for Dustin Poirier gonna be very interesting to see how it all plays out. Yeah, absolutely, Errol. I know that we're just stating the obvious for Dustin here, but look, 
Whatever Connor does next is going to be massive for Connor. Connor is choosing to share that with Dustin, and I really hope that some part of Dustin sees it that way. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.